Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst and PJ Vick and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that thing. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for checking out today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holst, and on today's episode, we actually are able to get out there on the ice and put together a pretty fast-paced bluegill and crappie bite. But let me tell you, even though we've had quite a bit of cold weather lately, ice formation, to me, feels like it's way behind where it should be, given the amount of cold weather, the cold temperatures we've had, particularly overnight. And what I think is going on there is, it's been incredibly windy, that's kept a lot of lakes open, and just two and a half weeks ago, we were seeing temperatures in the 70s. I think there's a lot of warmth left in the water that really needs to dissipate so we can get those temperatures where they need to be to really freeze things up. So if you're gonna get out there on the ice anytime soon, make sure you've got the spud with you and a buddy, be careful. And hopefully you're able to find a spot like Connor Kleiss and I were able to find where we're able to get in on a really fast paced bluegill and crappie bite. So that's what we have for you today. It's me and Connor Kleist out in Ottertail County chasing early ice, bluegills and crappies here today on In-Depth Outdoors. All we're really fishing is, you know, big, big lake, deep basins and whatnot. Uh, and essentially these fish early in the year, they like to get up kind of where that early vegetation is still up and tall. Uh, so what we're fishing here is a shallow 15 foot bowl uh, surrounded by deep water. We're kind of in some narrows here and all around the bowl is still going to be standing weeds, a little bit of life to them, eight, nine, ten foot of water. And everything kind of seems to graduate into that middle of the bowl here. Uh, kind of your stereotypical early ice panfish bite where uh, you've got a lot of fish. We're going to try fishing aggressive, stay up above them and try to call in some of those bigger fish. But nice, nice mix of crappies and bluegills. So we'll see what we can do. Beautiful day to do it. So I'm going to go uh, grab a waxy and get fishing. I got one meeting me. Oh, it's good to be pan fishing again. It's good to just be out. Woo! That was quick. You're gonna talk me out of this jig. <laughs> Not a bad first crappie of the season. Nice. Like you said, it's just good to be back. Nothing crazy, nice eater. 10, 11 inch crappie there. For good there karma, we go. like we'll get her back. James is on. There you go, guy. And I got lots more waiting. He's feisty. He had his Red Bull or something this morning. There we go. Their attitude changed here. <laughs> Let that one go, but that's my uh, first panfish through the ice. Last night we were doing some exploring. We went out and did some walleye fishing and got a couple of those on the ice. But that's my first fish that'll actually make it into a TV show anyway. And I'm just fishing a, a 1 32nd ounce bull spoon from VMC. Glow green UV there. Glow on the back and just wadding her up with some meat. Couldn't find any spikes, so we're fishing wax worms, and the fish don't care. Hey! It's the little guy. No wax you needed, I think, for the school I'm on. No? You, <laughs> just, pretty, you just go in plain plastic? Yeah, they're pretty fired up. I think for the bluegills, at least, then it helps to have a little bit of meat on there, but if you're just trying to target the crappies, straight plastic and just being a little bit more aggressive. Well, I'm a big fan of fishing spoons for panfish, but I don't think I'm good enough to do it without meat. Yeah, I'm marking. Mackin'. Ooh, there he is. I don't think this one's quite as big. 
About the same. Heck yeah. Come here, you. I wouldn't call them crazy fired up. No. They just come up underneath and slurp a little bit. I'll take that all day long. Knock the rust off this goat rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> First day on the ice each year is, you know, I mean, I tip my hat to all you guys at home that organize your ice fishing equipment, you know, four times over the course of the summer. And that's not us. <laughs> we usually just <laughs> throw everything in the truck on the way out of town for the first trip of the year and figure it out once we get here. Yeah, you really don't know what you're gonna be fishing, where you're gonna be. It's a show. <laughs> Try to find some place safe to be in an area where we can talk about, you know, having enough ice where if somebody goes to fish that area, they're not gonna run into a bunch of lakes with really poor ice conditions. Not a bad little crappie. Did you raise the standard a little bit? A little bit, about Ooh. the same. Ooh, I'm getting tempted to keep a few. I know how you roll, bro. I know, I'm looking at them, they're looking at me. Haven't looked at me funny yet, though. <laughs> power your passion with Norsk Lithium. Check your charge with the push of a button or power accessories with USB ports. Norsk Lithium combines weight savings and technology to achieve performance others can't. Four capacities are available, designed for the way you fish. Choose our ultra lightweight batteries for smaller sonar units. Step up to our high capacity batteries, designed to power live imaging and 360 sonar. Norsk Lithium, setting the standard for lithium batteries. Strike Master, dedicated to continuous innovation. Choose one that fits your style. Strikemaster Ice Augers. See the full lineup at strikemaster.com. At Humminbird, we make products that are always ready for your next adventure. With unparalleled mapping, sonar, and live technologies at your fingertips. To help you find, catch, and stay on more fish. Humminbird, simply, clearly. I've got one big mark down there and somehow the bluegills keep beating me. Still have that spoon on? Yeah, honestly, I'm not really fishing it very spoony, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I'm just down there barely moving it. A little better, but that's not what I drove all the way over here for. Of course, truth be told, it's just to hang out with you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. I think the school scared its way over here. <laughs> there you. This one's got a fresh lip wound. I wonder if we already caught him today. <laughs> Frequent flyer. He didn't get any smarter? No, I think it's kind of going the other direction for him. <laughs> Joop. Telling you. Spoons work, bud. That one was up higher. This is a much better fish here. Yeah. Oh, I believe you. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, you've seen it. <laughs> you've done it. <laughs> here comes a good one. Yeah. About three feet higher up in the water column, that's going to be your uh, little bit better fish. And he probably didn't question it. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. I just have a pretty steady stream of bluegills down there, and I'm just sitting on top of them and trying to 
see what crappies swim through. I think I might get some waxies on though and slow it down and see what kind of bluegills are down there. Some good ones out here. You get some nines and some tens once yeah. in a while. Boy, did that thing dump it. <laughs> it helps when you put some bait on there. Does it? I mean, I don't want to overstate the obvious, but <laughs> wow. He just woofed that thing up. Yeesh. Well, I'm glad I remembered this, the forceps. All right. All covered with snow. About our average today, probably 10 and a half. I don't think that would make 11, but decent first ice crappie. And there's just hundreds of them in this little bowl here. So what'd you do? Did you end up putting some meat on that thing? I did not. I just went plastic again. And it took me a whole seven seconds, I think, for one to decide that, hey, I'm hungry. There are some advantages to being first. There is, there this, is. This little spot will get some pretty good pressure on it later. It will. You know, every area's kind of got their stereotypical early ice spots. And, and uh, with a thousand lakes up here, it helps to kind of spread out the pressure. But there's sure. always that known spot that is always pretty productive at an early time of year. And this is definitely one of them. But well, if you're going to eat crappies, these are the right size. They are. Oh, well, those bluegills will surprise you. They'll hook into one nice one there. Yeah. Pretty nice bluegills out here. Looks like a decent fish coming up on me here. Get on, buddy. My right hand is screaming at me to put my glove on. Nice of that wind to pick up. Oh, yeah. We didn't want it to be too comfortable out here. No. Oh, just such a tender touch. Seems like a fresh hole produces a few crappies to start and then it kind of stales out a little. Well, I got a bunch of them over here, but they're just being pains in my behind. Leave us alone. It's a cold wind. Oh, come on, buddy. Get mad. Well, I think Thank oh, you. The oh. man's got one. There we go. Easy release. They really are perfect fish though. If you're looking for a meal, yeah. I mean, can't beat that. Have you caught many bluegills yet? I haven't. I haven't. And I'm what, not what using a spoon, roll so. reversal that is. I know. I know. Don't tempt me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Yeah, it will. <laughs> it's not like any of the bluegills I've caught were uh, very big. No. I think I'm going to grab that uh, light flight and punch some more holes. I seem to have scared these off. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. We say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. Strike Master, dedicated to continuous innovation. Choose one that fits your style. Strike Master Ice Augers. See the full lineup at StrikeMaster.com. Power your passion with Norsk Lithium. Check your charge with the push of a button or power accessories with USB ports. Norsk Lithium combines weight savings and technology to achieve performance others can't. Four capacities are available, designed for the way you fish. Choose our ultra lightweight batteries for smaller sonar units. Step up to our high capacity batteries, designed to power live imaging and 360 sonar. Norsk Lithium, setting the standard for lithium batteries. At Humminbird, we make products that are always ready for your next adventure. With unparalleled mapping, sonar, and live technologies at your fingertips. To help you find, catch, and stay on more fish. Humminbird. Simply. Clearly.
All right, so here's a good example of how we use the Mega Live to consistently stay on these fish. Uh, both Connor and I were fishing in this direction and the school kind of thinned out. There's still a few over there and you can just see them right along the bottom on the Mega Live. They're just little flickers of light. So when that happens, instead of just running around punching a bunch of holes randomly, you just swing the Mega Live around. As we come to our left, look at that. That is just an absolute monkey pile of fish. And then what you're tracking is, if you look on top of the pole here, there's actually a, a little V that kind of points in the direction the transducer's aiming. So right there you can see in that direction from 20 feet to 40 feet out. I mean, that's what that mark is at the top. That's your distance from the transducer marks. 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet. So that's the school of fish that we would be targeting. So I'm gonna head in that direction, get on the holes between 20 and 40 feet, and we're gonna drop right back down on that school. It's just a super cool tool. Doesn't mean you can make them bite, but you do know where they're at. There we go. Just another average one. And you know, I really should have eaten breakfast before I came out because honestly, it kind of looks kind of tasty. So I might keep a little <laughs> meal of fresh panties to bring home just because it's been a little while. I'm craving a bluegill though. So James, you get any bluegills, I might I need know, one I, I know two. what happens. I know. It didn't take long. Usually, I mean, I'm sure you guys had a bet going over under how long until I started killing, but... A good fresh meal of panfish is hard to beat for me. At the rate we're going here, you could be home eating panfish for brunch. You just never know. <laughs> that one came flying up from a swivel. That means he's dumb. Man, I got just such a big one down there. They're gonna play a little hard to get today. My guess is it would be nice to have a little broken sunlight. Don't go away. I got one on the screen down there I want to catch. That's just a little guy. There he is. That one finally cracked it. I got a little bit more aggressive with the jig on that one. Hey, well, that's a bad news gill for Connor. He does like those quite a bit. Come here, you. Boy, did he woof that down. It's out of character. He went from being real lethargic to him coming right up and just pounding that thing. All right, nice little eater. He's seven and a half. I don't think he'd hit eight, but that one will be good. There's just so many fish in this little basin. A little better one here, James. Got a lot of fish kind of riding right on the outside of this bowl. I got about a dozen of them down there, and I got a gill I kept for you. Well, thank you. We've already kind of starting to see a little bit of uh, restrictions on certain lakes that have, you know, good quality panfish in them and whatnot. Do you think we're going to continue to see that with, you know, technology as that's progressed, that it'll be kind of a statewide thing, or do you think we'll kind of stay more lake by lake? I think it'll be more lake by lake. Yeah. Um, not, not all bodies of water have the ability to grow 10-inch bluegills, right? But I do think that a lot more anglers year after year are starting to value quality absolutely versus quantity and you know if you want to catch a whole ton of seven and a half inch bluegills there's lots of lakes where you can do that absolutely but when you've got lakes that can really kick out some nice ones i, I hope we see more of those five fish limits the smart hub system from rapala allows infinite customization Install the smart track to mount your favorite accessories. Choose from the rattle reel, rod holder, adjustable arm, cup holder, and workstation. Set up your house exactly how you want it. Keep a line in the water day and night. Mount your electronics right where you need them. Endless possibilities. Whether you're in a house or portable shelter, the Rapala Smart Hub is the ultimate versatile system. Power your passion with Norsk Lithium. 
check your charge with the push of a button or power accessories with USB ports. Norsk Lithium combines weight savings and technology to achieve performance others can't. Four capacities are available, designed for the way you fish. Choose our ultra lightweight batteries for smaller sonar units. Step up to our high capacity batteries, designed to power live imaging and 360 sonar. Norsk Lithium, setting the standard for lithium batteries. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. crappies firecrackers seems like uh, the quicker you can pick through them and kind of keep them around the better off you are so waste no time when you got fish down there and I got one meeting me and it seems like you'll have your little wave of crappies that'll move through and then they'll kind of you'll notice your fish get a little bit more lethargic they'll get stale and those will just be your bluegills that are kind of hanging out below you so Bad crappie there, right around her average. Nice fish, healthy, stout. Could be back, but really all I'm using, you can see how he ate that there. So I'm get him popped out. Is a size eight, her number eight Pro Series VMC Nymph. And uh, I haven't been using any waxies or nothing. Seems like the bluegills might want a few, but the crappies, all I'm doing is just having enough to keep that tail moving, staying above. I kind of always have fish down there, so all I'm doing is staying aggressive, staying aggressive, and trying to read the fish that are actually on the screen. You know, if you can kind of see when they get a vapor trail or fish are kind of working up and out of the school, then I'll slow it down a little bit and try to actually finesse that fish to come in and finish and seal the deal. But right now, no waxies needed. It's a little cold out on the hands, so I'm happy just using plastics for now, but uh, some nice fish, good to scratch the itch again, and yeah, pretty simple technique here, but, uh, one thing we've really noticed too is that with this little bit of ice, there's a little bit of snow cover on it, but not much, that uh, these fish can be kind of weary. So we're kind of, we have a nice spread of holes that are drilled out. We kind of go around with the Mega Live and are able to really just kind of uh, pinpoint where those fish are at and hopefully we have holes near them and then we can get to that hole and just kind of settle down because when you're talking this little bit of ice, a lot of times your fish are going to be darty, they're going to be a little spooky. So just trying to settle in on a hole where there's some fish around you seems to help a lot. Oh, I got a bunch of them down there. There we go. Oh, there are you. Boy, they are getting lethargic. I don't know if there's a weather change going on that they're not digging or what. They were smoking on that bull spoon to start the day. And now we're just coaxing them to eat a small jig in plastic, which is fine. It was just a lot more fun earlier when they were really aggressive and a little bigger. Fishing a 1 50th of an ounce VMC Nymph. And for me, I was getting lots of bites on that spoon, but just not very many fish hooked up. They were just kind of nipping at it. So just kind of watching Connor, what he was doing, he was putting more fish on the ice. I made the switch and they're by no means super aggressive on it, but they seem to be a little bit more apt to actually get the whole thing in their mouth. 
There's one. A little better. Oh, right around that eight, eight and a half inch mark. Nothing crazy by any means, but sure feels good to be back out here on the ice, just actively searching down fish, drilling holes, staying on the move. Now they definitely really kind of slowed down. Uh, a little bit more lethargic, get them back so they don't get too cold. Uh, definitely more lethargic. All I'm doing is I took my plastic off. Um, I really have only caught one crappie since I've done so, but kind of switching gears to bluegills. Now it seems when the sun gets up a little bit, get a little later in the day, your crappies are definitely moving quicker throughout the basin. You'll still catch them coming through, but you're definitely kind of trying to slow down a little bit because right now most of the fish that are on my screen are two, three foot off bottom, kind of more lethargic, not chasing as much. So I just went a couple wax worms, plain hook, real simple, uh, just watching your tip, making those fish come up. And a lot of times you'll get your initial bite, a uh, little bit of a tick, waiting for that second one for that fish to actually eat the bait because a lot of uh, sucking and spitting that they're doing. So, um, but yeah, good to be back out here. And uh, the hands are a little chilly using the meat, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Plucked another one. Oh, that's a pretty one. Nice orange belly on that one and thick. I like catching these guys. Not the biggest bluegill I'm gonna catch this winter, but definitely a nice one. And I think we're about at the end of our day here. There's so few places to get out onto the ice, and this is definitely not a hidden spot. We're really starting to draw people now, so we'll probably catch a few more fish, maybe stay out here for another half an hour, and then we're going to call it a day. So that brings us to the end of today's show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to what is our first ice show of our 17th season of broadcast here at In-Depth Outdoors. And any time you can get out on the ice, do so safely before Thanksgiving, that's bonus time in my opinion. So huge thanks to Connor Kleist for going out, spending the day with me, putting together a real fast paced bite, getting a nice mess of fish on the ice. Anybody that's looking to get out with a real knowledgeable angler in the otter tail area, Connor Kleist your guy. Make sure you look him up, we'll run his contact information here at the end of the show. So uh, next week, obviously we're gonna be tracking down a good ice bite if at all possible. The boat is put away, so we're all ice from here on out. So please do tune in next week where we're gonna be somewhere, definitely north, looking for the next hot bite on ice. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.